4. The Sea Witch Phineas gave Serena good directions to that lonely part of the sea. The desolate seascape all around her made her want to hide or flee. She'd never seen the sea so empty, so dark, with so little life. But she promised herself she would brave this, and if necessary, she'd fight. But she was thankful she didn't have to, as she finally approached the place where she would hopefully finally become a woman and taste of Creator's grace. The sunken ship lay there, just as Phineas had said. The silk-crusted vessel was massive in size, and the bones of manfolk lay dead all around the inside of the ship. It was very much a place of death. Serena thought about turning back, but then she thought of having breath. She pushed onward into the ship and found the sorceress in a small room. The sorceress looked strange to Serena, petite, with depressed eyes from gloom. She was an old hag with wrinkly skin, and Serena could only guess what was within, the cloth covering the witch's lower half, though she didn't swim. What do you want, pathetic being? My house is not open to you. If you please, sorceress, I've come to get a clue. I know exactly why you came, and my answer is, why should I? Just take your three hundred years, little one. Three hundred years, then die. Serena almost left right there. The sea witch was so cruel, but Phineas told her she'd have to insist. Do you take me for a fool? I've made my decision. I am not lost. I will do this at whatever cost. The witch grew agitated and slammed a fist on her table. What do you have to offer me? How are you able to pay your debt to me, you poor, miserable wretch? I can bring you riches from my royal treasure chest. Bah, said the witch. Riches are worth nothing. Please, I'm not sure. Can you help me think of something? The sea witch exhaled with an annoyed tone, not quite a sigh and not quite a groan. Uh, do you have any talents? Yes, I have a few. Good, now tell me, what exactly do you do? I can sing. The sea witch snapped, show me. And Serena sang a song of the sea. But before she got far, the witch bid her to stop. It isn't bad, but it's not worth a lot. Serena bowed her head, and the witch cocked hers. You swim gracefully. Perhaps both can incur the cost of this transaction. With ease will you part? Your voice and your grace? With all my heart. The witch snapped into action before Serena could have known it. With one hand, she grabbed Serena's mouth. With the other, Serena's tongue and pulled it. She released her grip on the cheeks and then brought a knife right through the tongue with a swipe. Pain tore through Serena's body and she stumbled back in fright. The old sea witch laughed as blood colored the water. Here are the rules, my little daughter. You may never sing or speak again. Obvious by what I just did. Two, your grace will live on. But invisible needles will dig into the flesh and bones of your feet, so to walk is beyond masochism. These are both the price for changing an organism. And very last of all, you will still turn to foam if you do not find true love. Heaven will not be your home. And if into true love you do fall, and your love rejects you, then that is all. You will die shortly after, and the foam of the sea will have a few more bubbles to flow aimlessly. The witch twirled around, and Serena saw legs of manfolk under the witch's long shawl. Serena's eyes went dark as terror gripped her heart. Was this now the end? 
or just the very start. Hi, I'm Joshua David Ling, and I'm resurrecting epic poetry for nerds like you. Come join me at joshuadavidling.com or just about anywhere on social media.